Listen to Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. A book adaptation by Oxford Reading University. Level 2. Part 1. 1. Oliver Twist was born in a workhouse in a small town. Nobody knew his mother's name or where she came from. There was no ring on her finger, so she was probably not married. The woman died soon after Oliver was born. For nine years, Oliver lived in a house for children without parents. Then he was moved to the workhouse. It was an awful place. The owners didn't want to spend money on food. They gave the boys a little bit of porridge and nothing else, so the boys were always hungry. One day, one of the boys said, I am so hungry, I want an extra bowl of porridge at dinner. If I don't get it, I will eat one of the smaller children. The smaller boys were very scared, but they were also afraid to ask for porridge because the cook could beat them. Finally, they decided that Oliver should talk to the cook. After dinner, he took his bowl and went up to the cook. Please, sir, I want some more, he said in a shaking voice. The cook was surprised and angry. He called for Mr. Bumble, the owner. The man beat Oliver with a stick. Then he locked him in a dark room. The next morning, Mr. Bumble put a note on the workhouse gate. I'll give five pounds to anyone who will take Oliver Twist as an apprentice, the note read. Oliver spent a week in the dark room. Finally, Mr. Sowerberry, a local mortician, took him on as an apprentice. The boy wasn't happy in his house. He ate scraps of food and slept under the table. Mr. Sowerberry had another young apprentice. His name was Noah. However, Mr. Sowerberry liked Oliver more. It made Noah very angry. Where is your mother? he asked Oliver one day. She died, Oliver replied. I don't want to talk about her. Sorry, Noah said. I think it is good that she is dead now. I am sure she was a bad woman anyway. I think she was a criminal. Oliver's face became red. Don't say such things about my mother, he shouted, and attacked Noah. They started fighting. Mrs. Sowerberry heard the noise and ran to help Noah. She beat Oliver very hard and locked him in the cellar. Later, Mr. Sowerberry returned home. When he learned about the fight, he took Oliver out of the cellar. Then Mr. Sowerberry beat him and sent him to sleep. Oliver lay on the floor and cried. Early the next morning, while everyone was asleep, he ran away. 2. Oliver had nowhere to go. He decided to walk to London. There, Mr. Bumble and Mr. Sowerberry couldn't find him. But London was very far away. After seven days of walking, Oliver was too tired to go on. He arrived in a small town just outside London. There he fell asleep at somebody's door. When Oliver woke up, he saw a strange boy standing next to him. They were about the same age, but the boy wore adult clothing. His coat was way too big for him. "'What are you doing here?' the boy asked. "'I am walking to London,' Oliver replied sadly. "'But I am extremely hungry and tired. I can walk no more. I have no money and no place to stay.' Actually, I live in London, the boy said. I know a good man there. He will let you stay with him for free. The boy's name was Jack. He bought Oliver some food. Soon their conversation became friendlier. I don't think he is an honest boy, Oliver thought, but I am so tired I will go with him. If I don't like the place, I can always leave. Late in the evening, the boys finally came to London. Jack led Oliver through a poor and dirty neighborhood. Finally, 
they stopped in front of an old house. Oliver really wanted to leave, but Jack quickly pushed him through the door. They entered a dirty room with black walls. Oliver looked around and saw many silk handkerchiefs hanging from the ceiling. An old red-haired man was standing by the stove cooking sausages. Five boys sat around the table. They were no older than Oliver. Fagin, this is my friend Oliver Twist, Jack said. I am very happy to meet you, the old man said with a smile, and shook Oliver's hand. You are looking at the handkerchiefs, aren't you? We left them there to dry. Fagin laughed together with the five boys. He then gave Oliver some food and drink. After dinner, Oliver fell asleep almost immediately. 3. The next morning, Oliver woke up late. He went downstairs to find Fagin making coffee. Jack sat at the table with another boy named Charlie. Did you work hard this morning? Fagin asked. Very hard, Charlie said, smiling. He took two wallets and four handkerchiefs out of his pocket. Fagin looked at the handkerchiefs carefully. They are quite expensive, aren't they, Oliver? he asked. Yes, sir, Oliver agreed. Fagin and the boys laughed. Oliver didn't understand what they found so funny. We will have to take the marks off them, Fagin continued. Let's teach Oliver how to do it. He will make handkerchiefs better than Charlie, right? After breakfast, Fagin invited Oliver to play an unusual game. He put all sorts of things into his pockets and walked around the room, acting like a man on the street. Sometimes he stopped at the door or the fireplace and looked over them, as if they were shop windows. Every time he stopped, he looked around for thieves and checked his pockets. Charlie and Jack followed him. When Fagin turned around, they hid. Finally, they found the right moment and took almost everything from his pockets. After that, Fagin made Oliver do the same thing. Every time Oliver managed to take something from him, Fagin gave him a shilling. For several days, Oliver practiced with Fagin. Then Charlie and Jack took him to work. For some time, they just walked down the streets. Then Jack suddenly stopped. He pointed at an older gentleman standing by the bookshop. The gentleman was busy reading a book and didn't look around. Look, Jack said quietly. He came up to the old gentleman, quickly took a handkerchief out of his pocket, and then ran off. Oliver watched the scene with his eyes wide open. I can't believe it, he thought in fear. I didn't realize they were thieves. He turned around and ran after Jack and Charlie. At the same moment, the old gentleman noticed that his handkerchief was stolen. He saw Oliver running and shouted, Catch the thief! Immediately, a crowd of people ran after Oliver. Jack and Charlie saw it and also shouted, Catch the thief! That way, they could easily get away with their crime. Tired and afraid, Oliver ran into a police officer. The officer took him by the shirt. It wasn't me, Oliver cried. I don't care. You must follow me to the police station, the officer replied. Please don't hurt the boy, the old gentleman said in a worried voice. The gentleman's name was Mr. Brownlow. He went to the police station, too. There he talked to the officer. I don't want you to punish the boy, he said. I think I recognize his face. Do you know him? the policeman asked. I think I do, the gentleman said, but I cannot remember where I saw him before. Suddenly the bookshop owner entered the police station. I saw the crime scene, he said. This boy didn't steal anything. Let him go. 
At this moment, everything went black before Oliver's eyes, and he lost his senses. Mr. Brownlow felt sorry for him. He took the boy with him and let him stay at his house in Pentonville. Hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get more audiobooks like this. 4. Oliver was ill for several days. All this time, Mrs. Bedwin, Brownlow's housekeeper, took care of him. When Oliver was strong enough, he went downstairs. A picture on the wall caught his eye. It was a portrait of a young woman. Oliver couldn't take his eyes off it. As he stood there, Mr. Brownlow walked in. "'Poor boy, how are you feeling?' he asked. "'I am very well, sir. Thank you so much for your help.' "'Do you like this picture?' the old man asked. "'Yes, the woman looks so natural. I feel like she wants to talk to me, but can't because she is not real.' Mr. Brownlow looked at Oliver, then at the picture. His eyes opened wide. Oliver and the woman in the picture looked very much alike. Mr. Brownlow didn't understand how it could happen. Meanwhile, Jack and Charlie returned to Fagin's house. The old man was very angry to see that Oliver wasn't with them. If Oliver tells the police about us, we will all go to prison, he thought to himself. There was a girl in his criminal group. Her name was Nancy. That day, Fagin gave her a task. She put on nice clothes and went to the police station. I am looking for my little brother, she said to the officer. His name is Oliver. I am very worried about him. Tell me, what happened to him? The police officer told her that Oliver was in Pentonville. Later, Fagin told Nancy that she had to find the boy and bring him back. 5. One day Oliver came downstairs to look at the picture of a lady once again, but it was no longer on the wall. Mr. Brownlow didn't want you to worry about it too much, Mrs. Bedwin explained, so I put it away. But I liked that picture, Oliver replied. Well, let's wait until you feel better, then we will put it up again. Suddenly, the door to Mr. Brownlow's office opened, and he asked Oliver in. I have something to tell you, my boy, so listen carefully, he began. Please don't send me away, Oliver cried. I will work for you. I won't do anything bad, I promise. Just don't make me go back to the streets. Don't worry, I am not going to send you away, Mr. Brownlow said nicely. But can you tell me your story? Where did you come from, and how did you end up with the thieves? Be honest with me, and I promise to always be your friend. But before Oliver could speak, someone knocked on the door. An old gentleman in a hat entered the room. It was Mr. Grimwig, Mr. Brownlow's friend. They started talking. Oliver wanted to leave, but Mr. Brownlow had something else to tell him. My dear boy, can I ask you a favor? I need to pay for the books I ordered in the bookshop. Could you go there and give the money to the owner? Of course, sir, I will be back soon, Oliver promised. He hid the money in his safest pocket and left. If he comes back, I will believe that he is an honest boy, Grimwig said. If he steals your money, don't let him into your house any more. I believe him, Brownlow said, smiling. However, it soon grew dark outside, and Oliver still wasn't back. 6. On his way to the bookshop, Oliver took a wrong turn. He walked for some time, then stopped. Suddenly, Nancy appeared out of nowhere. "'My dear brother, I found you at last,' she shouted, and took Oliver into her arms. "'I don't know you. Let me go,' he cried. But Nancy held him tight. The noise drew the attention of a small crowd of people. 
What is going on? a woman asked. This is my little brother. He ran away from home and joined a band of thieves, Nancy explained. But I found him at last. Now I will bring him home. His poor mother cried her eyes out. It isn't true. I don't have any brothers or sisters, Oliver cried loudly. Suddenly a tall man ran out of the beer shop. His name was Bill Sykes. He was one of Fagin's partners in crime, and Nancy's boyfriend. "'Where have you been?' he cried. "'Come home to your mother, you terrible boy. You almost broke her heart.' With these words, Bill hit Oliver on the head. Oliver was still weak and couldn't fight. He let Bill take him to Fagin's house. Fagin, Jack, and Charlie laughed at Oliver's new expensive clothes. They took them away, along with Brownlow's money, then locked the boy in a dark room. Do you like this story? Send it to your friends to listen to it together. Mr. Brownlow was very worried. He put an advertisement in a newspaper, offering money to anyone who knew anything about Oliver. Mr. Bumble the owner of the workhouse read the advertisement. He wanted to earn some money, so he went to talk to Brownlow. He called Oliver a bad boy and told many stories about his awful behavior. It all made Mr. Brownlow very sad. Maybe my friend was right after all, he thought. 7. Oliver didn't want to be a thief anymore. He refused to listen to Fagin, so Fagin kept him locked in the house alone all day. Sometimes the old man let Oliver spend time with him and the boys. He told funny stories about his crimes, and Oliver laughed. He was happy not to be alone. One day, Sykes came to Fagin and asked for help. He needed a small boy to help him rob a house. I will send Nancy and Oliver there to help you, the old man promised. Later, Fagin told Oliver, In the morning you will go to Bill's house. You should do everything he says because he is a very dangerous man. At five in the morning Nancy woke Oliver up. They got into a carriage and rode off. Soon they came to a big old house. Bill and his partner Toby were already waiting for them. "'Climb the fence, boy,' Bill ordered. Oliver understood what was going on. "'I don't want to. I am not a criminal,' he cried in fear. His legs shook and he fell to his knees. "'Get up or I will kill you,' Bill said angrily, showing Oliver his gun. "'Be quiet,' Toby said and put his hand over Oliver's mouth. If you shoot, the owners will wake up. If the boy speaks again, I will break his head. Now, Oliver, climb the fence and get inside through the window. Then open the front door and let us in. Go! Oliver was too afraid of Bill's gun, so he did as Toby said. I am not going to let the thieves in, he thought. I will run upstairs and warn the family. But he didn't have the time to do it. As soon as he got inside, he heard someone talking. Two men in their nightclothes ran downstairs. One of them saw Oliver and shouted. Then a gun fired. Oliver felt pain in his arm. Then someone caught him by the shirt and lifted him in the air. Everything went black before Oliver's eyes. 8. In one of England's workhouses, a woman named Old Sally was dying. She called for Mrs. Corney, the workhouse owner. When Mrs. Corney entered, Old Sally sent the nurse away. The two women were alone now. In this room I once helped a young woman, Old Sally began. Her voice was extremely weak. She wore an old dress and had dirty feet. She gave birth to a boy and died. I took something from her that day. 
Now I want to give it to you. With these words, old Sally gave Mrs. Corney a small gold locket. She gave me this and asked me to take care of her son Oliver. She believed that the locket could help him find friends in this world. But I never gave it to him. Maybe you... What? Mrs. Corney cried. But old Sally didn't reply. She closed her eyes slowly and fell quiet. She was dead. Mrs. Corney walked out of the room. The nurse was waiting outside. She had nothing to say after all, Mrs. Corney said. Fagan learned about Bill's failed crime from Toby. He was very angry. At once he ran to Bill's house, but Bill was away. Only Nancy was at home. She lay with her head on the table. Wake up, Nancy. Have you drunk too much? Fagin asked. Where is Bill? I don't know, Nancy replied. It was hard to understand what she was saying. Do you know what happened to the boy? Somebody in the house shot him. Then Bill took him out through the window and left him on the cold ground, Fagin said. I hope he is dead now, Nancy said angrily. It is better to be dead than to live among people like us. When I see the poor boy, I start hating myself for what I am doing. And why do you need him anyway? Losing the boy will cost me hundreds of pounds, Fagin shouted. He wanted to ask Nancy more questions, but she refused to answer. Soon Fagin left. When he returned to his place, he found Monks, another one of his criminal friends, in the kitchen. Where have you been? Monks asked. On your business, my dear Monks. I talked to Nancy. I am afraid she started feeling bad for the boy. I don't understand why you sent him with Bill, Monks said. Why can't you train him to be a regular thief like Jack and Charlie? Will that help anyone? Fagin asked. It will help me, Monks replied. Kill the girl if she is getting in the way. I can't kill her yet, Fagin said. She is useful to us. Also, if you want Oliver to become a real thief, I can turn him into one. But if he is dead... If he is dead, I have nothing to do with it, Monks shouted. A scared look appeared on his face. What is that? I think I saw someone on the stairs. The two men ran to the door, but nobody was there. For more English books for all levels, check out appeva.com. And now, watch this video. It will help you improve your English right now.